Hello students. So today we will talk about M phase. Now this M phase is also known as mitotic phase. Now what is taking place in this mitotic phase? First we need to know that in this mitotic phase mitosis is involved and what is happening during this mitosis? There are two things that are taking place. Number one splitting of DNA of parent cell and cytokinesis. So what is cytokinesis? On the screen you can see as mentioned division of rest of the cell including cytoplasm. So when we are talking about cell division we come to know that each and everything inside the cell is dividing into two. So basically here in mitosis when we uh, talked about division of DNA of the parent cell is taking place and apart from that cytokinesis is also taking place. So basically we can say that this uh, cytokinesis is nothing but division of the cytoplasm. Now there is one important thing that we need to know that the phase between 2M phase, the phase between 2 M phase is termed as interphase. This interphase is further divided into three parts. As you can see on the screen, it is very clearly described how this interphase is divided into three parts. On the both side, you can see M phase written. So between two M phase, suppose this is M phase 1 and this is M phase Two. So between first M phase and second M phase, there are three division or three checkpoints or three stages we can say. So entire process being happening or entire process taking place between the first M phase and the second M phase is termed as the interphase. Now as you can see that this interphase includes G1, S, and G2. So in this entire interphase again you can see there is a G1 phase, there is an S phase and a G2 phase. Now let us talk about what this G1 phase is, what S phase is and what G2 phase is. Now let us understand what this G1 phase is. Now as you can see on the uh, screen that there is a cell that is undergoing interphase and finally it is getting divided into daughter cells. So the concept behind this G1 phase is very simple and very clear that during this G1 phase a cell undergoes interphase and by the end of by the end of this M1 phase by the end of this one uh, M1 phase what is happening? daughter cells are being formed. So what we can say that a new cell is formed as a result of the recently concluding M phase. So which is the recently concluding M phase? This is the M1 phase. By the end of M1 phase what we can see two daughter cells are being formed or we can say the cell is getting divided into two cells. One more thing that when a particular cell is dividing itself what it needs to do? It needs to duplicate or replicate. What? It needs to duplicate and replicate its DNA. So what we can say that if a cell decides to divide then it is necessary, it is necessary that it needs to duplicate or replicate its DNA which ensures that each daughter cell receives an identical, complete and accurate copy of the parental DNA. So in a very simple uh, language we can say that this G1 phase is including one more thing. What? That is the duplication and replication of this DNA. Now after G1 phase the cell will enter into S phase. Now what is going to take place in this S phase? When the cell is mature enough to divide into two daughter cells, 
this division involves synthesis of new material the cell before dividing itself not only duplicates or replicates its dna material but it also has to divide or replicate its other protein based components so we can say that during s phase the cell not only replicates its dna but also other protein based components now after the cell has replicated its dna after the cell has replicated its protein based components now what is the cell going to do it is now going to enter into the next phase that is the g2 phase now what is happening in this g2 phase the cell ensures that the dna material has replicated properly and its preparation has finished for what for cell division there are some points that has to be kept in mind first of all that the cell cycle varies from cell to cell on average a human cell spends 24 hours to divide once the chromosome number also varies in all organisms when we talk about we humans we humans have 23 pair of chromosomes or we can say that we have in total 46 chromosomes so as they come in pairs they are called diploid each pair similar to each other therefore we can say that they are called homologous pair okay now one more thing to notice that there is one pair of chromosome these are haploid why they have exactly half the information so these are basically found in the sex cells or gametes we can say that are sperm and egg now why do gametes or sex cells have half the number of chromosome there has to be a reason to it so we can say that these gametes they have half the number of chromosomes so so that when they come together the resulting cell called the zygote gets one full set of 46 chromosomes and this keeps on and on dividing now let us talk about g not phase now what is this g not phase it is also known as resting phase so this resting phase is a period in the cell cycle in which cell exists in a quiescent state exists in a quiescent state now what is happening during this phase the cell is neither dividing nor preparing to divide so what is happening during this g not phase or this resting phase cell is neither dividing nor preparing itself to divide now there are some type of cells such as nerve cell and heart cells which becomes quiescent when they reach maturity now we inherit traits from both mother and father we inherit traits from both mother and father and one half dna one half dna each from father as well as mother we receive all the pair of chromosomes are similar but not identical so the pair of chromosome is similar but not identical in fact they contain the version of same gene what do they contain they contain the version of same gene and this is called alleles now if we look into chromosome we would find different parts of the dna of the chromosome responsible for different traits now if mom has blue eyes 
and dad has black. Now, how is it going to be decided whether the daughter cell is going to get black eye color or blue eye color? This is where dominance and recessiveness comes in. In nature, some traits or characters are more favorable and therefore when they interact with the recessive form of the trait, the dominant one is expressed or we can say the dominant one is visible.